Although this talk is about ladies shaking up tech, um, I just I have to give you guys a heads up. I'm sorry to disappoint you all, but I won't be twerking tonight. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's shocking, but I just don't know how to. So if anyone wants to show me later on at the meet and greet, I'm like really happy to give it a go. Um, but you have to go first. Uh, so when I was 14, I built my first website, and it just felt like a bit of magic that clicked, and I was like, this is for me. Um, as someone with dyslexia, I've always struggled in school, to, so to like find a course that I could do and be good at, it was just something amazing for me. Uh, along with art, design and photography, web design became another hour of my day that didn't completely suck. <laughs> um, cut to university and I'm un learning web design uh, while studying my bachelor of, at AUT University. Um, it's a real life miracle after that. I get my first job after the financial crisis and I'm burn building an online candy store. And so life is sweet. Um, there really is no better way to learn something than other, on, other than on the job. Like firstly, you're getting paid to learn and secondly, you don't need other reasons. Um, <laughs> cut to university. Oh wait, that's the same slide. Uh, I feel very grateful to have met my mentor, David Varson, whilst working at Brankit. Uh, throughout this time, he's really motivated me and pushed me, and I've always really enjoyed our philosophy debates over coffee. Um, I was then self-employed for four years. It taught me a lot about hustling, building amazing relationships with clients. Um, I'm a big fan of the warm fuzzy, so I really focused myself on learning, uh, getting into not-for-profit sector and building websites for them. Uh, and then I came across Girl Code about two years ago, uh, and I just loved the idea of it, and I got in touch with Matthew and Al Alice, and they offered me a job as a teacher. Uh, I really didn't know any other female web designers at this time, and I really wanted to get more women involved in tech. Firstly, because it's like a great career choice for me. And I also could tell that the tech industry was lacking diversity. Uh, I really looked up to what Matthew and Alice were doing and I thought they had created a fantastic and challenging course at Grid Auckland. Uh, what I love about Girl Code is that we're using real world tools and we're replicating the environment that developers actually have. So it actually involves a lot of teamwork and collaboration um, and and we also eat biscuits, <laughs> so that's very important to me. <laughs> um, so, I really appreciate how connected I feel to the tech community through working at Girl Code now, and uh, through going to women tech events and events like this one tonight. Thank you so much to the organisers. Um, since the explosion of technology, uh, the ways that businesses and countries operate uh, has changed irreversibly. Uh, therefore, it's created a huge number of jobs. So I think if it's something that you're like considering doing, the potential is huge. There's like jobs out there that my careers advisor could never have told me about because they just didn't exist at the time. I know my uh, journey into tech has been somewhat simple and I've practically fallen into it. But if it's something that you haven't fallen into and it's something you would like to try, you should definitely give it a go. Uh, there's lots of pathways of getting into tech, so there's uh, degrees, online courses, classroom courses like our one, uh, and you know, you could just build a website on your own or for a friend. Come on, give it a go already. Um, so what I enjoy most about coding is problem solving, and uh, you're constantly being challenged, you're failing, but you're loving it when you finally figure it out, and um, I think it's just all the things like about tech I love, it never gets boring because you're always learning new things. Uh, I think we all benefit from a diversity of viewpoints and technology and from the people making our technology. Um, for example, when Apple released its all-encompassing health app in 2014, they somehow forgot about half the population and left out a period tracker, which they had to later correct by re-releasing. Uh, Another example is a problematic soap dispenser that wouldn't give soap to people who had hands of colour and only to lighter skin tones. Uh, so they had to like, obviously get those, those out. Um, 
But yeah, by having more diversity in tech, I think, and testing, and in testing, I think these lapses in inclusion could have been avoided. Um, as tech is now so intertwined in our lives, I think ethics and philosophy has become vitally important. Uh, as many or any Black Mirror fan knows, there are some pretty bleak possibilities out there. Um, businesses and countries are gathering massive amounts of data on us and algorithms that can predict our behaviours better than our closest friends, giving these entities the power to sway elections, uh, grow extremism and device addiction. Thanks, with thanks to the GDPR, we now see uh, an important change in data privacy, the biggest change in 20 years. Uh, it's empowering people to now take ownership of their data. Putting user safety first should be at the forefront of these businesses. But for example, the recent Lime scooter, uh, like the brakes locking up, <laughs> which we probably all know about. Um, someone commented on one of the news articles that it's not it's not a software glitch, it's uh, a human wrote that software, therefore it's a human error. But of course their program is never intended to hurt anybody, but people make mistakes, therefore technology isn't perfect. Uh, there's talk of programmers taking an oath, like a Hippocratic oath that doctors take, uh, perhaps because they're building software that's going to affect millions of people's well-being. I feel incredibly fulfilled and lucky to be working towards making ethical software. Um, I'm now working as a UX UI designer at Silo. Silo is all about creating a decentralized messaging app, giving users the power to like take care of their own data. Um, and it's also encrypted uh, end to end. Uh, with Mindless browse, in a world of mindless browsing and intrusive advertising, Silo puts you back in control of your digital world. That's from the website. <laughs> 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 it's great to be working with like-minded people. I've proposed we could get a code of ethics at all, at, at like all our developers and employees can adhere to, something I'm really excited that we are now implementing in our future workplace. So. Uh, Saturday will be my one year anniversary of deleting Instagram and Facebook. Um, I feel like I have a lot more control of my free time. No more mindless scrolling through news feeds of brunch pics and things. Uh, there are teams of incredibly intelligent people whose entire job is to just keep you scrolling for as long as possible. I personally don't have the willpower or the awareness not to fall into these perfectly tailored honeypots. Um, I think people are now demanding greater transparency from their digital products, and I hope this will open doors into the next uh, wave of jobs in tech so that they include roles in ethics and in philosophy. Thank you.